What is up, everybody? Uh, we're getting ready to head to Hutchinson. I wanted to record this because I got to get on the road. So, y'all get to go with me. The hut. We won't record the whole thing. Out uh, the hutch. We just have a few minutes. Again, it's the 10 minute study. And I so hope that you spend 10 minutes in God's Word. I want to show you this because I think it's awesome. I had to go inside because it's too windy in Kansas to do this outside today. Kids might be coming and running in the car. Pick up is a daily study. I encourage you to spend 10 minutes a day in your Bible. It's such an important thing to do, and it's a life-changing thing when it happens. And we're talking about the economy or the citizenship or the constitution of heaven. And I want you to see what it says next, which is hard. I mean, it really is, but, but read this with me as we follow in Matthew chapter 5. And following. It says, verse 38, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's quoting verses out of the Old Testament and Exodus and Leviticus and Deuteronomy. The Bible says those things. It, it, so it says, you know those verses. You've heard what it says, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, who is this again? This is Jesus. This is the Sermon on the Mount. This is what, what God wants to do in him and manifest. It is manifested through Jesus and ultimately through them. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other cheek. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go a mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks. And do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. It's hard stuff. We live in a world where it, we have our rights. Now, we don't have time to dig deeply in. And then again, if, if you want, please keep studying and reading this. But in this short time, I want to compel you to think about it like this. Jesus is saying, I want to do something different in your life. I, I want to manifest in your life something different, something different than the world. The law, the Old Testament was there to be a taskmaster, scripture says, a tool uh, to teach you. But it wasn't there to say you have to do this. It was there as a limit Remember what happened before the law? Well, man just did what they wanted. Remember within a few generations, every inkling of man went evil all the time. So the law was to limit sin and the effects of it. But there was this growing. And Jesus is saying, now I need you to see something even better. And that's the law of love. You got to see that because that's where Jesus is coming from. Think about it. Can you can you tell me a story in the old in the New Testament where Jesus defended himself, or while hanging on the cross, does he say, "Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do"? Now you might be saying, "Wait a second, Robert. There's the clearing of the temple." You're right, but he wasn't defending himself. What did he say? my father's house. So often when we look at this, I, I, I'm not saying to be such a, a pacifist in a sense, and I'm kind of, I'm a pretty big pacifist for myself. What, what he's saying, don't defend yourself. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Let God do the defending for you. And let's just be honest. If it was all weighted out, and you got what you deserve for all the wrong you did, would you have the right then to really declare any wrong or restitution from someone else? And how interesting is this that Jesus, and, and I was thinking about this and looking at it, and I'm going to just ponder this to you guys. Look at Scripture. And, and it's very easy and clear to see that Jesus died for all the sin of the world. All the sin of the world, every ounce of sin ever done and committed and ever will be committed, 
The debt was paid by Christ. Now, will everyone accept that? No. We know that. Hell is still real. And some people will not accept the paid for gift. And why I point that out is what it's saying here. If anyone sues you, I mean, do, do you see this idea that, that if, they, if they, well, let's go with the take the shirt. Well, these all come from things that would have been understood into the culture that, that he's dealing with. And they could, you could take the, the undergarment, I'm not sure it's under the outer garment, but you were allowed to keep the other. It can be really forcibly taken from you. And he says, no, look, just give it all away. Now, well, what are you saying, Robert? It's an understanding. Remember what we've been talking about. At the beginning of this, we, we talked about murder, right? What is he saying? It's your heart. It's the anger. He wants to manifest a change in you. He says, the economy of God is different than the economy of the world. And stop giving into the anger that controls Stop giving in to the lust that overwhelms. Start being an oath keeper. And understand that God will take care of you. Such an important thing that, that Jesus is trying to say here. And he'll make it even more cl clear in the next group of verses as we wrap this up. Because at all of this, yes, verse 48, we've talked about. So verse 20 is the linchpin to the Sermon on the Mount. And in this part of the sermon, probably the linchpin to that is verse 48. Be perfect, therefore, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. This is what God wants to manifest in your life. But he's saying, look. Now for you... Don't defend yourself. It's hard. Man, it's hard for me. I want to defend myself. I want to scream from the mountaintop of, of wrongs. But then Jesus says, why? I heard this, and it was a very interesting... It's called the, the gospel of the second mile. And it's this understanding of verse 41. If anyone forces you to go a mile, go with him another. And it's the gospel of the second mile. And this understanding of what's going on, that second mile, what it is saying, it's saying you are forced to go one mile, but to go two. But do you imagine the conversation that had to be? So a Roman guard could force you to walk a mile. And imagine you telling that Roman guard, I'm going to walk another mile with you. I'm, I'm going to go one more mile. And then that Roman guard to look at you and say, why in the world are you willing to go a second mile? And then to turn to them and say, because my king told me to. Because I'm not from this place. I might be in Rome. I might be where you're in control, but I'm a part of a kingdom that's greater. Who's this king? Let me tell you about Jesus. Your testimony, and, and I love sharing my testimony. I love to hear people share their testimony. But the, one of the biggest parts of your testimony is going to be how you live your life. And I just want to, to give you that thought for today. You might have a right. You might have been wronged. But when it's balanced out, the one who had done no wrong took the cost of the sin for all mankind. And all he's saying is, look, I took that one. So let it go. Let it go. Now, it doesn't mean, uh, and there's so many more things. We have time to talk about it. And it's, and it's not saying, and you got to see it, no reason to defend yourself. But I'll tell you, Scripture makes it really clear that, that Jesus did defend the undefendable, the unloved. And even when he was, think about this, when they came to capture Jesus, he made it very clear, don't, it's take me. Even after Peter lopped off his ear, he healed him so that Peter wouldn't have the burden of hurting a Roman or high priest guard. Do you see what he said? He says, I will defend you to my dying breath. But I'll leave the defending of me to God. 
And that's the challenge for the day. Let God defend you. Let God vindicate you. Let God take care of those things if unneeded. But just trust God. Such a great thing. Keep reading. We'll see the rest of it. It's 10 minutes. Please get in your Bible. Share a post like this as we get more people studying the Bible and reading together. I encourage you to do it. We're going to Hutch. So you have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time.